Hi there, Paul Kirtley here, author of Paul Kirtley's blog and founder of Frontier Bushcraft. Now I get a lot of questions about kit, which is a little bit ironic because bushcraft fundamentally is about a knowledge of nature and what you can use from nature. But to be honest, most of us go out with some equipment. We don't go out in just our underpants and build a natural shelter every time we go out camping we're going to take some things with us particularly if the purpose of our trip is to move from A to B. We simply don't have the time to be building shelters every day we're going to take a tarp we're going to take a sleeping bag or a hammock or a tent we're going to take those things with us so we've got a shelter um, ready to go and we can erect it quickly at the end of the day. Um, hiking, canoeing, all of those activities where we want the, the main aim is to, to cover some ground and make a journey we're typically going to take uh, sleeping equipment with us. Now this video is the first in a series that I'm going to make about how to lighten your load because that's really the question that people ask. Um, they've seen my video about packing their kit, um, how to pack things relatively compactly, and um, they've seen my article about what to take for a basic uh, bushcraft style camp in the woods, but the question keeps coming up how do I how do I lighten the load whenever I go to the woods I've got a lot of stuff on my back it weighs a lot um, I can't pack things in the same way as you do I can't quite get them into my rucksack and then my walk into the woods even if it's a short distance um, it's really burdensome with all, all the stuff that I've got um, so really what I want to do in this series of videos is help you lighten your load while maintaining the functionality of your kit and the place to start really over and above once you get beyond a day hike the thing that you're always really going to have with you unless you decide to go out and build some shelters and and sleep out in that way is some sleeping kit so we're going to look at that first Frankly, people are carrying often really big sleeping bags around with them. That's the first thing. Um, a lot of military surplus bags and also synthetic bags that are marketed by bushcraft companies and outdoor camping companies. Synthetic bags are very good. They're easy to look after. Um, they're warm and they're relatively inexpensive, but they're relatively bulky compared to some other uh, types. And the main type you're going to get is a, uh, a down bag and we're going to look at that shortly um, but also people tend to take bags that are too warm for the season so this is the bag that I take to the Arctic with me when I'm doing winter trips in northern Scandinavia in the middle of winter where I might be bivvying out at minus 35 degrees Celsius um, this is the bag that I take this weighs 2.7 kilos but I see people turning up to courses with bags that size, ex-military bags and bags of that nature. That's too warm for a northern temperate environment from the spring through to the, uh, the autumn. It's almost too warm for a northern temperate environment in the winter. Yep. So the first thing to think about is, are you over-specifying the bag that you're taking? Yep. A lot of people are carrying bags. This, as I say, weighs nearly three kilograms. That's over six pounds. Next thing is bivy bags. Again, ex-military. In here is a Dutch army bivy bag. Again, it's great for winter bivvying because it's sizable. Um, I can get a big warm bag, whether it's a, a synthetic bag like this one or a big fluffy down bag. I can get it in here without it being restricted, without air being squeezed out, and it's the air that keeps me warm. So a big bivy bag for winter camping, serious winter camping, serious winter bivying is a good idea. It's also very durable. I can lay it down on a bed of spruce boughs. I'm not worried about it getting damaged. Also, the Dutch are a tall nation, so it's a big bag. So it's good for tall people as well, but it weighs over a kilogram. Yeah, it's heavy. Um, and again, do you need to be taking something like that out with you in the woods in the summer? I don't think you do. This is the first tarp that I bought. Um, it's an Australian hoochie. It's a, high, um, it's a high weave. It's quite thick. It's a high weight fabric. Very tough, very durable. Um, but again, this weighs about a kilo. It's like a bag of sugar in my hand. 
Um, and again, there's a lot of people carrying stuff like this. Um, very good piece of kit, very durable, last a lifetime, absolutely excellent, but it's heavy. And so if you're concerned about weight, and this is only a one-man tarp, if you're concerned about weight, this is probably not your first choice. So here, we've got a 2.7 kilo sleeping bag, we've got a one kilo bivy bag, and we've got nearly uh, a kilo here. You've got about five kilos of kit here, particularly once you include a sleeping mat. Five kilos, that's over 10 pounds just for your sleeping kit. That's a lot of weight. And that's the area you really need to concentrate on when you're looking at reducing the weight of your multi-day camping pack to start off with because that's where you'll make the most gains and then we can look at other areas where we can make some improvements as well. So first off take a bag that's suitable for the season. Now, this is a three season sleeping bag so I use this from about early April through till the end of October in the UK unless I'm really high up in the mountains um, uh, early, the early on in the season or late on in the season this is a bag um, that I might typically use I like this for the woods um, I run a lot of courses over the summer and we don't travel huge distances on those courses we might be walking for a few miles and um, from one bivy site to another bivy site but I'm not walking 10 15 20 miles a day like I might be on a journey I'm quite happy to have this synthetic bag um, it weighs about 1.3 kilos so it's 1.4 kilos lighter than that bag um, I'm quite happy to have that with me um, and also because I'm using it a lot it's a synthetic bag it's easy to clean I can put that in my washing machine at home and dry it out at home it doesn't need specialist cleaning like a down bag does but if I'm going to make a journey where weight's critical, that is too heavy. And I'm going to look at some other options and we'll cover that shortly. But people might be worried, you know, particularly early in the season or late in the season. What if I'm a bit cold at night? And um, what if we have a frost, you know, have a late frost in the spring or an early frost in the autumn? What if I have a really chilly, unpleasant night? And that is often what causes people to take bags that are too heavy for the season. Well, you'll know from my previous videos that I always take a little bag that has um, a hat or a balaclava in there, some warm gloves, little um, woolly gloves, and a thermal base layer, typically a merino wool base layer. And I take that any time of the year because you can have a cold day. Even a rainy day in the summer can be quite chilly, it, particularly if you're not um, moving a lot, if you're, if you're if relatively static, depending on what you're doing. Um, having a, a, taking a cotton shirt off that's great in warm weather, but as soon as it gets a bit cold and damp, it's not great. Having a thermal layer to put on underneath is a sensible thing to have. You can use that while you're sleeping as well. So if you're, if you're worried about having a cold night, that's something you probably have with you anyway. You can use it in your sleeping bag. Um, and so you don't need to carry the extra weight. You've already got that, so make use of it. That's now got two purposes rather than just one. You can use it during the night as well as during the day. Also, I can't think of a time of year, particularly in Northern Europe or Britain, where you wouldn't be carrying a hat at any time of the year. Again, cold, damp days, early in the morning, late at night, sitting around the campfire in the evenings, can be a bit chilly. A, a, a lightweight woolly hat, beanie hat, um, is really really sensible to have. I've always got something like this with me. Again, you can wear it in your sleeping bag, keep you warm. Um, and also socks. Yeah, if you're worried about getting cold, you can, you've got socks with you anyway. Socks, hat, top, that's going to more than add a, a whole season to the rating of your sleeping bag if you put those on. So you can, you've got those with you, you don't need to take the big bulky bag. Another thing a lot of people like to take um, is a silk liner for the sleeping bag. Um, that helps keep your sleeping bag clean because clean, uh, dirty sleeping bags don't work as well. Um, they, they don't function as well. They, they, all the insulation starts to get matted. Um, the, uh, the air then isn't um, as trapped as well. That means that it's not as warm because it's the air that keeps you warm. So the insulation needs to support and have in it lots of air. And as soon as all the insulation starts getting matted and not having air in it, it's not going to work as well. Also, a dirty sleeping bag is not a very pleasant place to be. That's much easier to clean than a sleeping bag. So whether you're using a down bag or a synthetic bag, that can be a good thing to have. Also, it adds some warmth to your sleeping bag. So it adds a little bit of warmth to your bag and it helps keep it clean. So for not a lot of extra weight, that's something, again, that's gonna add warmth to your bag and 
also help keep it clean and in good nick it'll make it last it longer so we're already we're already reducing the weight just by thinking about how we can stay warm at night rather than just taking a huge bag just in case and that's a big leap to take to start off with and then we've got tarp and bivy bag yep, those were both quite heavy they're very heavy duty they're very tough but do we really need them to be that heavy and that tough probably not even if you go to a, a British Army bivy bag, which I've got in here, they're 800 grams. So you're saving a bit of weight um, and that's a sizable bag as well. Even if you're a big person, you've got plenty of room in a, in a British Army uh, bivy bag. I put that in, my, in a stuff sack myself just to keep it contained. So that starts to save you a bit of weight. So that and that, along with my sleeping mat, and we'll look at tarps in a second. I'm starting to lose a bit of weight there. Here's another Australian hoochie, same design as this one, but it's a lighter weight material. It's about half the weight of this one. You can see it's a lot smaller as well. So we're reducing bulk, less bulky sleeping bag, less bulky bivy bag, less bulky tarp. That's still a one person uh, tarp, but it's a lighter weight material, still very tough, still very durable. These are the ones that we use in our courses. They get used a lot. Um, by a lot of people, some of whom are not particularly uh, experienced with using tarps um, or really necessarily experienced with looking after equipment. Things get uh, abused a little bit sometimes or um, they, just, they just get used a lot. These are very durable and they last a long time. So a very good investment, um, but still, you know, they weigh about half a kilo, a little bit more. They're still, with the rope on, they're still quite heavy. What you can look at maybe is a silicon nylon tarp. Now these are a lot lighter. Um, this is actually bigger than this tarp or the other one. You could get two people under this as a push. This is from Mountain Equipment Co-op. I bought it in, in Canada. Silicon nylon, scout tarp. Um, some geese going over there. Um, very good, very good. A lot lighter. Um, that weighs about 400 grams. So bigger area, lighter weight than the one-man tarp. That's one I often put in my day pack as well. Um, even if I'm out with a friend, if we want to stop for lunch and it's raining, we can throw this up quickly, have a shelter that we can both sit under, we can even have a fire under it. Check out the article on my blog, the value of a tarp in your day bag, that's the tarp that's in that article with the fire underneath it. What I haven't really talked about so far is sleeping mats. Now this is a Thermarest, um, this is a trail light Thermarest, so it's quite thick, it's quite a comfy one. This is, this is my luxury uh, Thermarest if you like. Um, it's still only a three-quarter length ba uh, uh, mat though. Um, I don't use full length Thermarest because it's just extra weight and it's extra bulk that frankly I don't need. Um, if I, I'm six foot one, um, over 180 uh, centimeters, I'm quite tall but I can still get away with a three-quarter length sleeping mat. Um, I put uh, clothing down for my pillow so I don't have my mat under my head I just put a waterproof and then a fleece that's my pillow and then under my feet I'm quite happy if um, from sort of below my knees to my feet that's not on the mat so they don't need the padding and if it's really cold first line of defense is putting a pair of socks on second line of defense is I can put a rucksack underneath if I'm really cold and I'm losing heat to the ground I don't need that full length bag so that weighs about, let just remind me how much that weighs. That weighs, I've got a few details here, about 550 grams that does. So that's not a bad weight, it's very comfy. And again, a lot of the time, if I'm not moving around too much, that's my combination. That and that, and maybe a tarp like this. Yep, so 1.3 kilos for this, 550 for that. So that's about 1.8, 800 for this. That's about 2,700 in total, add that on that's just over three kilos, so about seven pounds in my rough arithmetic. I'll put the exact weights on the screen um, on the video when I, when I edit the video, so you've got all that info there. So that's my kind of typical summer working on courses. Um, it's durable, it's relatively light, it's a lot lighter than that. I've saved several kilos over that already. Um, and it's not that expensive, I can wash it easily. Um, and that all works well. But what if I want to go really lightweight? Yeah, if I'm covering distance, I really want to get my pack weight down. I really want to get my pack size down as well, if I can, but weight is the critical thing. Well, there's a few things we can do that might really surprise you. Okay, the first one, sleeping bag. 
Okay. This is a lightweight sleeping bag. This is a down bag by Mountain Equipment. It's the Zero 0200. It is a summer bag, if you like. Um, the comfort is six degrees and the limit is two. Now, I'm filming this in April um, or late April, early May. And I've been using this in April and it's been almost frosty some nights. I've been warm enough in this. I've not been in a tent, which always adds a few degrees of warmth. I've been out under a tarp in nearly frosty conditions and this has been warm enough for me. Um, some nights I've worn uh, a thermal just in case, but to be honest with you, I haven't really needed it. Um, it's a good bag and it weighs 635 grams. Yeah, so that's half the weight of that bag there. Yeah, so I've saved 600 and odd grams just by using this and it's a really nice warm bag. Yes, it's more expensive. Yes, you need to be more careful looking after it. The materials are a little bit more fragile and yes, you need to send it off to a specialist cleaner rather than putting it through your washing machine. Never put a down bag through your washing machine. You will ruin it. But you're saving a lot of weight with that and it comes in it's nice in a nice little stuff sack as well. Next up, bivy bag. This is something I've got recently and I'm really impressed with. Um, a friend of mine was using one of these. Uh, I saw it, I thought, I'm gonna try one of those out. I was a little bit dubious about the breathability. It doesn't look like it should be really breathable. It, it breathes absolutely fine. This is a Snug Pack Special Forces bivy bag. And this weighs 440 grams. Yep, and not only is it small, that's the MOD bag, that's the Snug Pack bag. It's also about half the weight. Okay, so sleeping bag and bivy bag, just over a kilo, not even 1100 grams yet. So a couple of pounds for those two. And that's, that's my main sleeping kit sorted. What about sleeping mat? Well, I could use that one, but if you go really lightweight, this is the Thermarest Pro Light Short. Yeah, this is one of the lightest weight mats you can get. Pretty similar ground coverage to that one, a bit thinner, but perfectly comfortable. This is my lightweight backpacking um, mat that I use for all my lightweight trips. I use it for my canoeing trips as well. This weighs 400, sorry, 320 grams for that. 320 grams. Um, and finally, got a few planes going over today. Um, I'm camping, I've been camping all week um, down in the south of England and we get planes coming over on the approach to Gatwick Airport, which is about 40 miles away. Um, those people who want to build a second uh, runway at uh, Gatwick, this is the effect you're having on the countryside in the south of England. Um, not great, not great. It puts the tourists off. Tarp. This, believe it or not, is a tarp. This is also a silicon nylon tarp. The same material as this. This is by Integral Designs and um, it's the same size, it's the same coverage as one of these. This weighs around a kilo. This weighs 220 grams. So it's about a fifth of the weight of this for the same coverage. So that is the lightweight setup. 600 grams sleeping bag. Sleeping mat, 320. This is the heaviest of the little things, once you get past the, uh, the sleeping bag, this is 440 and this is 220. Total weight, just over 1600 grams. That's three pounds, nine ounces for the whole lot. For a full sleep system that's very protective, it performs as well as my sort of standard base camp setup, but is less than half the weight. Yeah, this weighs a little more than that sleeping bag on its own, 300 grams more. So it's really quite something. Yes, it's going to cost you a bit more, but that is a, a huge weight saving on this. This was over five kilograms, getting on for 12 pounds. Yeah, this weighs less than four pounds, yeah, 1.6 kilos. And it's a credible weight saving. So every single bit, you know, you save a few hundred grams here, a few hundred grams there, a few hundred grams there. Before you know it, you've made a massive saving. It's also a hell of a lot less bulky. Yep, so that is my lightweight tarp and bivy setup.
that you put it in on top of what you might have with you on a day pack uh, in a day pack for a day hike you don't even really notice it it's, it's like a liter and a half extra of water um, and the water bottles that contain them it's it's, it's very little indeed um, that is going to allow you to sleep out so that's my recommendation um, think about um, whether you're over specifying to start off with and go for the specification which suits the seasons and then if you really want to go to town choose some well chosen lightweight kit um, that is, is a great investment and once you put it on your back you're going to go much much further you're going to save your ankles you're going to save your back and uh, and have a much more comfortable time while you're out as i say this is the first of a series of videos that's going to help you um, lighten the load and go further and be more comfortable in the outdoors while still undertaking those bushcraft camping style trips. You, we're not asking you to do anything different here, we're just saying lighten the load, make your time more comfortable. So I hope you find that useful, I hope that serves you well. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.